What's up guys, thanks for tuning in. This week we're gonna bring you a couple of county parks that we stayed at recently uh, in Orange County, Florida, right in the Orlando area. If you're looking for somewhere to stay, these might be some hidden gems that you'll wanna check out. So to start with, not all Orange County parks allow you to camp with pets. Out of the Orange County parks, um, there are three that allow you to camp with pets and two that do not allow you to camp with pets. Um, Moss Park in Orlando does not allow pets. Kelly Park does not allow pets. The three that will allow pets are Trimble Park in Mount Dora, Magnolia Park in Apopka, and also the Clarkona Horse Park but that's an equestrian park. Uh, they do have RV sites there, but that's an equestrian park. So the two that we're gonna talk about today are Trimble Park and Magnolia. So the county parks are a really great option if you're looking at state parks and you find them full and you like that state park feel, county parks are more like that than the resort parks. Yeah, and Trimble Park in Mount Dora uh, was really nice. Um, it was kind of had that secluded feel to it. Uh, you don't feel like you're going back to a to a park. I mean, you kind of drive through um, like a neighborhood area. There's some really uh, some beautiful houses along the lake there. And then as you kind of get past all those, you'll see the sign for the uh, the park office. So you actually have to go pull into the park office to check in. Uh, check in is at two o'clock, and the sign on the door said two o'clock means two o'clock. Don't try to check in early. So. Uh, we were there at 1.45, so we were pushing the envelope by 15 minutes, but uh, it was fine. They let us get checked in. So then you actually have to turn around, go back out to the road, and then continue down a little bit further to get to Trimble Park uh, Campground. We were in Site 3, which is a back-end site. It was a very big back-end site, um, big enough to get you know our fifth wheel in there, park the truck sideways kind of in front of the, uh, in front of the trailer. Um, Maybe not so so much as a big site as far as lengthwise goes, but as far as having a lot of space at your campsite site, uh, there was a lot of room there. Uh, they had a nice uh, a nice paver area there that the picnic table was on. So it kind of backed up to uh, a little section of the lake that kind of cuts in right there behind uh, the, behind the campsites. So many of those campsites there are uh, at least a water view, if not right on the water. Um, they have a set of boat docks there, so. If you're camping with a boat uh, or want to bring your boat, then you can you can launch your boat back there by the office, and then you can drive around and use the docks there at the campground. So, uh, really nice park, very shaded, lots of big shade trees everywhere, uh, and just a, a really nice feel back there to this park. Another unique thing about this campground was around the fire rings, they had benches set up, and it was a little too hot in Florida in the summer for us to take advantage of that, but that was like a nice touch. Yeah, and, and the fire pit was set up kind of back away from your site, um, but the benches right there make it really nice. You can just kind of hang out by the fire if that's what you want to do. Um, they just, it was a really, a really well set up park, nice privacy in between the sites. Uh, not all of them had bushes or trees in between the sites, but there was enough there to provide, you know, a, a certain level of privacy. And then the sites that didn't have a whole lot of, of uh, bushes or trees in between them, were kind of offset from each other so you weren't just staring right at your you know right at your neighbor uh, while you were outside at your campsite but uh, we definitely enjoyed this park and uh, Mount Dora is a, is a really neat little city uh, it was super just a super calm town you know we drove in uh, we went and played some disc golf while we were there so we drove in town drove through Mount Dora uh, just a nice little small town um, quiet and it was a uh, it was really an awesome campground to stay at and the fact that it had an you know availability uh, there's only 15 sites there so the fact that it has availability when all your state parks in florida right now are completely booked to capacity tells you that it might not be quite as popular um, you might be able to to sneak in there if you're looking for somewhere to stay and your uh, your state parks are going to be full so there was a little just kind of in between our site and the next site there was a little a little tiny uh little tiny dock that kind of sticks out there 
Uh, there was some bluegill there. You know, we used some bread. Dylan did some fishing right there behind the site. You know, the I mean, the bluegill were all piled up there, so it wasn't uh, it wasn't hard to catch them. So, you know, if you have kids, they're gonna love doing some fishing right there off that little dock. Uh, they had a boardwalk trail that kind of runs back along uh, behind some of the cattails there along the lake. Uh, kind of follows the edge of the lake, um, and part of that, once we got far enough around, was closed off. But uh, once that's all reopened nice little hike back there on that boardwalk um, so just a, a really nice quiet peaceful stay and uh, we would absolutely absolutely go back there again and visit uh, Trimble Park and it's really affordable at only $23 a night so from there we headed to Magnolia Park and Apopka which is only about a 30 minute drive so Magnolia is a little bit different setup um, it's a big park the campground has 18 sites um, the very last site is a camp host site, so there's only 17 that you can actually reserve. Uh, definitely a lot different than Trimble Park. This one is a little, a little more uh, right kind of in in town there, so it's not it's not out of the way, not uh, not secluded or anything like that. Um, and it was a very busy park. There's not really a whole lot of privacy in between the sites. Uh, there's some privacy in between a few of them, but not not a tremendous amount of privacy. Um, Pretty much all the sites are roughly the same size, so it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't matter a whole lot which site you reserve there. You're going to have probably the same experience no matter no matter which site you're in. For our stay, we were in site 13. And site 13 was was a pretty big site. Um, it was it was one of the larger sites as far as you know overall space, uh, and then having a little bit of privacy in between us and the neighbors. There was like a little uh, there were some bushes in between us there, so. Um, not real thick bushes, but enough to create a little bit of privacy there on that side. Oh, and but one thing you should note is in site 13 and probably in several other sites is we had some walnuts, I think, falling yeah. from the tree. Yeah, um, I think those trees cover a lot of the sites, but in this particular site, there were some, I think there were walnuts. <laughs> um, I don't know exactly what they were. Uh, we went through this in Tennessee with black walnuts, but they were they were really big. These look just like those, except they were smaller. They're like the size of a golf ball, uh, and they would fall out of the tree, and they would smash onto the roof of the RV, and um, it sounded like somebody throwing baseballs. It was loud, uh, but uh, so surprising when the first few times, and then once we went outside and realized that they were all over the ground, it was pretty obvious that we were probably in for. Uh, going to get pelts about these things uh, for the duration of our stay. And it wasn't quite as bad. Uh, they didn't sound as terrible as the black walnuts in Tennessee hitting the roof, but it was close. Also, the raccoons are very ambitious. Um, our neighbors during this stay, uh, they were tent campers and uh, they left for an entire day and they covered everything up with a tarp so nothing would get wet. Tarps do not keep out raccoons. So uh, this raccoon was just happy as can be going up under the tarp, find whatever he could scavenge and hauling it back into the woods. So um, I'm sure once they got back, they were probably shocked to find out that a lot of their stuff was missing underneath their tarp. But uh, so, you know, be aware, uh, the raccoons are out, they're very active. And aside from the raccoon, the only other thing we saw was peacocks. Yes, they had peacocks there. Uh, if you never camped where there are peacocks, they are extremely loud. Um, I, I don't know, I don't know any way to describe the way they sound. They were down by the park, which is outside of the campground. You have to leave the, uh, the camping loop and go down kind of where the playground was. That's where they were hanging out. And, uh, there was no doubt they were down there because they were loud. Um, I don't know. I, I can't think of a good way to describe it, but they're loud. Um, but they stayed down kind of by the playground area. Um, and just kind of did their thing, but they, they have quite a few of them down there, and uh, yeah, they're loud. So that's pretty much it as far as Magnolia goes. Um, we were staying there so we could visit some family that lives about 20 minutes away. Uh, it worked out great for that. If you have to be in the Apopka area, if you have to be anywhere in that you know um, Orlando area, it's a great choice, uh, either there or Trimble Park. The uh, Magnolia Park is probably more centrally located. Uh, Trimble is kind of more on the outskirts, so you'd have a little longer drive if you were trying to go somewhere from there into Orlando. But um, the, from Apopka, it's it's a 
it's a very easy drive to get right into right into the middle of everything there in Orlando so um, it'd be a great place to stay and you're not going to pay you know the uh, outlandish rate of like an RV resort or something like that um, it's not full hookup it's water and electric only the dump station isn't the greatest way they have it set up um, it kind of loops around and if the way it loops around if if there's a backup there if there's more than really if there's more than two or three people um, in line you're going to kind of get a little bit of a log jam there and start blocking up the exit to the campground um, blind then those people are going to be blocking the people trying to get out of the dump station the way it makes a loop it's not not a super well thought out setup but uh, if you're going to stay there and you're going to use a dump station maybe scope it out first make sure there's not a line already forming there because if you just start um, if everybody just starts getting in line you're going to have you're going to have a, a bit of a logistics issue getting everybody into the dump station and then out and out of the campground so just something to keep in mind if you camp there but overall uh, we enjoyed our stay. Um, it was not as peaceful and quiet as Trimble Park was. So we would stay at both of these parks again if we were in the area, but our pick would be Trimble if we had our choice of which one. Yeah, Trimble Park was just a lot more peaceful, um, a little more off the beaten path out there, just a little more, you know, a little more our feel like what we what we enjoy in a campground, and uh, you know that one definitely checked all the boxes. It was a, it was a great little spot out there for sure. But for now, that's going to do it. We appreciate you guys watching, and we'll catch you guys down the road.